Hello, welcome to the webinar. Um, it's programming that inspires using Wondrosity kits in and out of the library. My name is Erin and I'm a learning content manager at Demco and the creator of the Wondrosity kits. And today I'm joined by three librarians who tested Wondrosity in their libraries, Mary Wagner from Houston Public Library in Texas, Claudia Haynes from Homer Public Library in Alaska, and Cassie Anderson from Milton Public Library in Wisconsin. A few housekeeping things before we jump right into it. If you have questions along the way, please feel free to enter them into the chat window or you can tweet them to us using the hashtag Wonderosity. At the end of the webinar, there's a brief three question survey that we would love for you to participate in so we can learn more about who is listening to the webinar and what you're interested in. And just so everybody knows, this uh, webinar is being recorded. It'll be available for viewing towards the end of the week. You'll get a follow up email with the link directly to it and it'll be available on the Demco Ideas site. All right, so a little bit about me um, and how I came to develop Wonderosity. I graduated with my MLS in 2010 with a focus in child and youth services. Um, then I worked as an informal educator in museums where I partnered with libraries, community centers, and other local groups for delivering programming to kids. I was hired by Demco in 2018 to kind of get a feel for library programming, specifically in summer, and to determine what some of the pain points around library programming are and whether and how the landscape is or is not shifting. Um, I spoke with librarians all over the country and discovered that program planning is really at the crux of any of the pain points that are there. Um, finding and planning high quality programming takes a lot of time and work, and so that's really where I focused my attention. Wonderosity kits are themed program kits to use with 8 to 12 year olds, and, that's, and they include anywhere from 6 to 24 hours of programming, depending on how the instructor chooses to implement the programs. What I heard repeatedly in my interviews with librarians was that program plans need to be turnkey and flexible, so the programs in each of these kits can be run exactly as they're laid out, or they can be modified, and there are suggestions for modifications to fit the space, the instructor, and the participant needs. There are also suggestions for how to break them down for younger participants and scale them up for older ones. And then once I had a rough prototype of Avatar Academy prepared, I shared it with the folks that I've been talking to, so again, librarians all over the country, and had about 12 different libraries volunteer to test the programs from that kit. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Mary, who's gonna talk about how it worked for the librarians in Houston. Good afternoon, I'm Mary Wagner, Youth Services Advocate for Houston Public Library, where our mission is linking you to the world. Um, Houston is the fourth largest city in the United States with a population of just a, a little under 3,500,000. And there's just under 6.9 million residents in the metropolitan area. Houston is also officially now the most diverse city in the United States. So um, we're excited about um, that title because it's true, we're a port city, we're an oil and a gas city. Uh, there's a lot going on in Houston. Uh, HPL uh, is the seventh largest library system in the US. Houston Independent School District is the seventh largest school district in the United States with over 190 languages spoken at home and in the schools. Um, Houston has at least five other major school districts uh, we're a young city with 36% of the area residents aged 25 and under. A little over 15% are between the ages of 25 and 34. So over 51% of the population is under the age of 34. It's a big city, it's a sprawling city. It covers an area of 636 square miles that are connected by freeways. This is a car town. Uh, Houston Public Library itself has 38 express and neighborhood libraries, three special collection libraries, and a central library. Each neighborhood library is strongly connected uh, to the community in which they serve. Uh, in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey, um, some of our locations are still closed. Eight locations closed due to Harvey. One of the busiest ones has reopened just this year. Uh, another is undergoing renovation and we'll 
open early next year. And then two locations are currently operating out of multi-service centers. Uh, another location is going to be renov actually completely torn down and rebuilt and will be a tech link when it reopens, which is a, a fascinating combination of technology and libraries. Um, I was asked to, to talk a little bit about my career, uh, which I've been with Houston Public Library as of officially this week, 28 years. It's a long time. I came up from being a page. Actually, I, I was a shelver at the first location where I worked. Uh, then I became a, a library assistant, basically a circulation assistant. And from there, I became a paraprofessional where I was an assistant children's librarian and I was in that role for many, many years. Uh, then I switched to collection of development where I ordered all the children's fiction and picture books, all of the teen and YA materials and all of the AV for the system. I did that for four years and during those four years from 2000 to 2004, I went to library school part time. Uh, at which uh, after that, I was able to become a library manager and I managed three very, very different locations. Um, one location with a large Hispanic community, the next location with a large African-American community. And the third location is what I called United Nations. It just has everybody because it's in the medical center area. Uh, from there, I became a senior manager, which is kind of like a regional manager. And I had as few as eight neighborhood libraries reporting to me and as many as 14. Uh, after a few years in 2014, I shifted over to project management where I was involved in a lot of special projects, including a Lean Six Sigma study of our library material selection division, one I had formerly worked in, which was a very interesting project. And then 2018, I switched it back to my first passion, which was services to youth. Now, wonder city, what brought us to this? Um, I think that, um, actually, I'm going to go back a little bit because in 1991, the library where I worked had one computer with a giant floppy disk and there was no internet. And research was being done using reference books. And now we work with digital natives who know how to use a device, but don't always know how to research using that device. And so we've seen these trends over the years uh, where things have gone from gaming to STEM to fake news and fact checking, and then to where we're now really focused, at least HPL is, on equity, diversity, and inclusion, and unveiling programs that meet uh, these focused, intentional programs to bring that to our libraries. And so when we were looking at Wanderosity, our initial interest was sparked by the fact that we had worked with the Very Ready Reading Program, which overlaid our story times at all of our locations. And so saying that, it, it when we're talking about that equity, diversity, inclusion, part of that is the equity. And also equity for our customers to make sure that there's some consistency in the program that we're going, that we're offering, so that no matter which location you go to, you're going to have a great experience and it will be a similar experience everywhere you go. It won't be necessarily cookie cutter because you can switch out a book, but, but you'll know the format and the format will be consistent. So that structure is there. The goals are there and no matter what we're reading, we're, we're reading with those goals in mind that the parent will know that there's gonna be tip sheets at the end uh, where they'll know how to engage their child better. And so that's what brought us to this program. Now, when Aaron approached me and asked me how we wanted to do it, I didn't throw it out to where I said, okay, every location has to do this. I just let the site select themselves. I put out there what the program was going to be about. 
but then I wanted the, the test side to actually be committed to what, what they were doing. Um, staff had to be committed to fulfilling the guidelines set by DEMCO for the program. And so staff selection was staff making that decision. And then to further that, I let the staff choose the activity that they wanted to do, which was very interesting for me. Uh, and that they, most of them, the majority of them, not all, but the majority chose avatar apparel design, especially accessories part. And I think the appeal was sharing a little bit about climate change and then watching the youth engage with each other to determine what skills their avatar needed in that environment. But that was kind of, I think, what they were really looking for. Um, and then staff could really refer back to the structure provided in the notebooks. So if there was something going on that they wanted to make sure that uh, if it got off track a little bit, there was the structure that could help them get back on track. And then the customer engagement, that is really what this is all about. Eight to 12 year olds are our core customers especially for our after school zones. So when we're doing out of school time programming, this is going to be a great fit for that programming. And that is uh, ultimately where we were going to see if it was a good fit for that and for our summer programming. So that, that was the basis for the test. Now, I think it skipped a slide. So what was the appeal? The appeal for the tweens was because they got to be creative. And the other appeal was because it was fashion. And a lot of our kids just especially, uh, some youth just really love fashion. And the other part of the appeal was that there was collaboration. So they got to talk to each other. They weren't in a room told to be quiet. They actually got to engage with each other. They weren't being lectured to. They were basically collaborating on problem solving. And it was a natural part of the process of creating that design. So it really didn't feel like school at all. And even when the kids struggled with what they were executing their ideas, because you know sometimes you have that idea in your head, but you can't get it down on paper or, or just you know, you're not that great with scissors, uh, the kids stuck with it. They followed through. And then for our customers, that last true measure of success was that they wanted to do it again. So when, you know, we do a survey at the end of every program and it's always refreshing that when they ask, yes, please let us do it again. And so the staff, from the staff end, they had clear instructions, very important. Uh, there were talking points for each part. The overall uh, structure helped them anticipate questions and next steps. Uh, the program was laid out to where it was easy to understand. And what was really important is that in most cases, the program had to be uh, scaled down or scaled up depending on who showed up that day. Generally speaking, it had to be scaled down a little bit. We have a, a fairly on the young side, more eight-year-olds than 12-year-olds. Uh, the takeaways was that staff, uh, knew what they could change after they'd done it once. They had a very good grasp of the program. They found the program was a good length for them, 45 minutes on average. And that the level of difficulty uh, explained in the binder was, uh, was very accurate. Uh, this was really critical to uh, scaling down the program. Uh, next, the uh, avatar apparel. So staff would cover that climate change, global warming issues. Uh, what they discovered is that it was important to do that before they put it on the table, the supplies on the table, to have the conversation first. Otherwise, uh, the kids would create fashion and then try to fit it into an eco issue instead of looking at the eco issue and then creating the fashion. So that, that was quickly learned with the first session and shared with others so that they wouldn't uh, try to do that to make sure that they put the supplies out secondary and had a little more time to actually discuss those eco issues. Uh, then staff uh, also found that uh, there was a lot more youth, uh, a lot more dialogue 
and they gave more time for dialogue at the beginning of the program so that they would keep talking to each other, really keep focusing on the design and writing it out on paper before actually once again starting to work with those materials. Um, there was a suggestion of about at least one location to add some easier to use tape for the younger children, uh, something easily remedied uh, in terms of supplies. Um, I think overall, uh, it was just a really good, strong experience where our staff uh, liked how it was set up. They were able to do it easily. It was done within the framework of of our after school programming or and during the summer it was done during uh, we, we did this in April and May and then some in June so that's why it covered both after school and during the summer reading program so it fit easily within both programs uh, because the time slot just really really worked well um, My overall impression is that as we move on and we're looking for equity and diversity and inclusion, it's important that we give youth that the tools to start problem solving and thinking and give them the opportunities to have real dialogue with one another and to actually maybe disagree with some design uh, and hold their own against, you know, maybe some peer pressure in the group. And in other times to, to show that flexibility to where they could agree with others on the design. So and I think really at its core, that's, that's the strength of the program. Thank you. So now I believe we're uh, passing it on to Claudia Haynes. Hi, everyone. I'm going to let the um, screen kind of catch up with me here. All right. So now we're going to switch to a very different HPL. This is the Homer Public Library. And the Homer Public Library is in Alaska. And it, it's kind of fun that I, I'm right after Mary because um, Alaska is a state as a whole that is bigger than Texas, but my community, um, which is quite small and rural, could probably fit inside the library one of, in one of the neighborhoods in Houston. So um, quite different. So Homer is a rural community that sits on the southern tip of the Kenai Peninsula. You can see in a map in the bottom right there. And it's accessible by a single road or by boat or plane. We're about 220 miles um, south of Anchorage, which is Alaska's biggest city. Homer is home to about 5,200 people, and the standalone library serves another 7,000 people in more remote communities, accessible by dirt road, plane, or boat, again. Um, so many families are involved in commercial fishing here or the maritime industry in some way, and so they're gone for significant portions of, of the summer. Our 17,000 square foot building houses well over 45,000 items. They, um, circulation is really high. And then we also provide access to a range of digital materials, um, much like your libraries, I'm sure. Um, for example, subscription databases, OverDrive, and Flipster, for example. So, I have worked at the library in some capacity for about 15 years. So first I was the coordinator of the Friends Group um, during the large capital campaign that raised money for the building that we're currently in. And then I um, have been working as a staff member here at the library as the Youth Services Librarian for about 10 years. I got my MLIS at the University of Washington at a time when digital devices like the iPad were just being introduced. And much of my work uh, at the library has been really focused on what literacy and learning for young people look like in a connected world, particularly in the unique environment of the public library. And so 
um, my library's programming for kids and teens has dramatically changed in 10 years, both in type and quantity. So you might be able to relate to this. For example, a schedule of two story times a week when I started and took over for the other person doing children's programming has grown into a diverse and busy calendar of one-off programs, mini camps, and monthly clubs for ages zero to 17, most of which involves hands-on learning activities. So while I'm the only youth services librarian at my library, I serve on local, regional, and national committees related to families and learning, in part to stay informed about library trends, um, what opportunities there are, out there for families in my community, for example. But I also do this to provide the perspective of a librarian serving a rural, remote community. So as, as part of this committee work, I've noticed that my community has pretty particular needs, but many of them are actually similar to underserved populations in other kinds of communities. For example, many families in Homer have been quick adopters of mobile technology, but their understanding of how it works, whether young or old, and how to use it successfully to solve problems and access digital information they need is sometimes limited. So like you, I do a zillion different tasks at work each day. So something like the Wonderosity Kits provides the tools I need to design and lead quality learning experiences for kids with limited time and resources. Let's see, I'm going to let the slide catch up with me here. Hmm. I am going to, I'm trying to let it catch up so I can show you some pictures of how I used the Wonderosity kit. There we go. So at my library, I tested the 3D modeling program piece of the Avatar Academy, and I actually did the program twice. Um, I, I ran the program the same way both times, piecing together parts prescribed in the kit, and the, both programs were for ages 9 to 12. And I really liked the mix of real world and digital creation. So the first time I hosted the program last spring with 10 kids on my own, and the next time over the summer, I recruited a volunteer to help me with a group of 12. So the programs lasted about 90 minutes in both cases. So I began the workshop by showing an image I made using the same tools as, as the kids would use on a large monitor. I asked kids what they noticed, how they felt about the image, if they thought the image was real or fake, and then how they thought I made the obviously manipulated image, which I'll show you in just a minute. So after the group shared some different ideas, I introduced them to green screen technology, which most of the kids had heard about, but few could accurately explain. Um, and I did this using a behind the scenes clip from the Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince movie, um, which really resonated with the kids. And there was a big aha moment about how something works in a very popular media that they're consuming. So since our green screen studios at the Homer Public Library were not life-size, I'm using green foam board for the backdrops to create mini studios. I passed out paper for sketching avatar designs along with modeling clay and other building materials they were to use to create an avatar. And I just wanna note here that while many of the kids who came to the programs play video games, few could really articulate what an avatar was. So as we designed and built the characters, I talked about avatars and we shared examples. So once the avatars were built, kids moved to the multiple mini studios in, the, in this big meeting room that we used to photograph their clay avatars on the green backdrops using iPads and the green screen app by doing. This was not a fancy setup. You can see a picture of it in the middle, but allowed kids to try out the fun technology and have supported access to the devices. And by supported, I mean, grownups were there to answer questions or offer, offer tips if needed. And once the first group of kids cycled through the mini, mini studios, they were actually helping other kids as well. So once they had their photos, I directed them to two websites where they could find and download copyright free images for the backdrops. As they searched for images, they considered where the avatar lives, 
what it eats, how it moves, special characteristics or powers, and the shape of its body. And once their photo was downloaded, they added it into the app and voila, a final image. So you can see examples on the right-hand side. Each of these images tells a story and the creators were eager to share them. I emailed or airdropped the final images to grownups as they arrived to pick up kiddos so they could act as conversation starters at home. And then I also shared the name of the app we use to help families extend learning. So this program supported creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, computational thinking, and hands-on learning. And it could easily be taken on the road as an outreach program because of the pop-up nature of the mini studios, the use of mobile devices, and the easy-to-carry modeling materials. So as demonstrated by my young friend's thumbs up that you can see on the slide, kids loved this program, which is why we repeated it. And kids made new friends who had similar interests. They played with new materials and technology in a low stress environment and learned new skills that were relevant to the media they consume. The volunteer who helped me the second go round told me multiple times how successful the program was and how easy it was to support as an occasional volunteer. And as I mentioned, I ran the same program twice to confirm the concept and format that they were a good fit for libraries like mine. So here's the big reveal. This is the image that I started the program with. And I wanna talk about really what I liked most about the program. So with National Media Literacy Week just around the corner next week, what I, what I value most about a program like this one is timely. This 3D modeling program focused on understanding images, who the storyteller is, what messages they tell, and how they make us feel. All aspects of being media literate in an image rich culture. We looked at obviously manipulated images created using green screen technology. This is the one I created as an example for the kids to analyze. And then became storytellers and made our own to better understand the process in a creative way. Kids learned a new skill and went home with the vocabulary to talk about the media around them and the curiosity to ask questions. So now I'm gonna pass it off to Cassie and let her talk about her program. Hello, can you hear me? All right, thanks Claudia. <clears throat> Try to click this slide next. There it goes. Okay. So I'm Cassie Anderson and I work with the Milton Public Library. This is our newly renovated library. Here are some pictures. Um, so we have an, a historic building in the area and um, we've renovated within the last couple years. One of the uh, pictures there on the bottom with the orange stool, that's actually our maker space. So we do have a, a spark lab is what we call it, a space set aside for programs like um, the Avatar Academy. And a little bit about myself um, before I jump into how this all worked for us. Um, I am the tech and tween coordinator here and um, I am actually new to uh, the library uh, as a career. I have been an at-home mom. I've done a lot of, I've worn a lot of hats working from home. And so I've, it's kind of been multi-layered. I've been a homemaker, child care provider, ministry lay worker, web designer, social media expert, blogger, and entrepreneur. Um, and so I've had a lot going on. And now I get to focus on um, just helping people here locally uh, with tech but also uh, the nine through 12 year olds being able to develop the collection on our shelves and put on programming for them. And my kids are also in that tween range. So I'm excited to be able to have programming that um, I can run by them and they can participate in being a public library. Um, so it's really fun to have my kids a part of the adventure. For some reason, I can't get the slide to click next. Sorry. 
There we go. Okay. So why Wonderacity? Um, so Aaron had approached our library and asked if we would like to pilot um, the program, and we chose to do a whole week. Uh, we chose to do a whole week worth of the Avatar Academy, to, so to do them all in one week. Um, before I did that, I kind of got my feet wet with just one of the programs with the LED wristbands. Um, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, I really it caught my attention because. You know, these are things, I love to do hands-on crafts and learning with my own kids and the daycare kids that I got to influence before my library work. And I also was very involved with um, the teachers at school. Like I, I was acquainted with them and I kind of knew some of the programming that they had. And I just found it really unique that we could have access to, um, we have 3D printing at the library, but to bring it into full use, to be able to teach something to the kids that um, on a much deeper level with circuit tape and LED lights and all these fun things, right, that they might not be able to get in a school setting just because of the larger classrooms and limited time and, and resources that way. So to be able to have a program for them here at the library, I just thought this is really unique. This is something that I wouldn't do as a mom at home. You know, this, this gives me ideas and, um, the curriculum, so to speak, um, to put a plan of action together. And so I was like, let's do this. This is really unique and really creative, and I love this. Sorry, I'm <laughs> this Turner doesn't want to go. Is there an admin that can maybe just hit that? Would that work for you? Thanks. Okay. Um, okay, so a little bit more about our library and our town and the population. Um, <laughs> we have a small population, just like Alaska had um, said in their presentation. We have 5,500, but we're also sandwiched between two large cities. So our uh, the people that our patrons are, uh, you know, they're probably a little bit um, more diverse in, in things. We have a few different elementary schools, a middle school, a couple high schools, and then Mecca's is right next door to us. Um, but we serve a small population, but again, they're just always on the go, very busy. Um, and again, we live in a historic, or we, our library is in a historic building. Um, and this last year, we were named WLA's Library of the Year in 2018. Next slide. Thank you. Okay, so day one, like I said, we, we used all the different, um, the whole entire Avatar Academy. We put it all in one week. So this is how we kicked off our summer library program. And I really thought it went well. This was my first summer experiencing being a tween librarian during the summer months. And it really gave me the opportunity to get to know a lot of the local tweens and to know them by name because we had them coming back day after day. So it really helped me build relationships and kick it off to a really good start. So here's how the 3D avatar um, program went. We created our own clay avatar people. Um, we kind of did like a wire base structure and then we put the clay over top and the kids had a lot of fun with it. And then I, I played a video for them that I found on YouTube that showed taking clay models doing a scanner um, image of it and then putting it into the computer system to edit. And then it could eventually be a 3D printed version as well. So we kind of walked through those steps. We didn't have the whole, we didn't do every single step within this um, program that day, but we kind of wrapped it all together to make sense of it, right? So we used a, an app on my phone called Capture. And I just took a, um, a scanned picture of one of the kids' profiles it was so cool. It looked like a hologram. Um, it took the whole 3D scan of his whole head. So kids could see like the from the shoulders up what that looked like. And then we went to the MakerBot in Thingiverse.com and we, we picked out an avatar model to actually 3D print. And um, that was really fun. And we named the avatar guy Bob. Um, and everybody was really uh, happy about this guy that they saw forming before their eyes in the 3D printer. And um, so it was just really cool. So we had the clay modeling, scanning, computer editing, um, the idea of computer editing, and then the printing right there. We discussed the differences between 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D. Um, so just very educational and um, the kids were super creative. Next slide. 
So here are some pictures of the clay models. And um, as you can see, everybody's just smiling, completely engaged. They had a really fun time. We tried to draw out our models before we made them. And um, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. All right, here's some more pictures and you can see our, our head avatar, Bob, there in the lower right hand corner. And Bob was very special to us because on the next day we actually used him as a reward. Um, okay, so this next day was the eco-friendly apparel design. So Bob was actually, um, he was the reward for um, the best the best apparel design so that people so that the kids would try hard and that they would want to do their best and then we'd kind of vote on a winner in the end so that was really fun so we laid out a ton of reusable goods a lot of recyclable get, goods so the paper craft or craft paper safety pins cereal board etc um, we just piled it all high whatever we had on hand ribbons and yarn and whatever and then um, we gave them some simple rules just going around giving some ideas like if you had an avatar ca uh, character what would you want it to look like? Do you want super capes, wings, dragon tails, masks? You know, do you want an animal, et cetera? And so then they, they took those ideas and they went crazy. To be honest, I was a little intimidated about this eco-friendly apparel design uh, right away just because before my own kids were tweens, I just remember the days of having some craft-like costumes and I felt like I did a lot of the work <laughs> just because the fine motor skills weren't always up to par or maybe the ideas weren't quite there and you know you just do your best to try to help them and so I was like oh no it's me against 10 other kids what's this going to look like and I got to tell you this was one of the best days that we had because the kids were able to be kids and they knew exactly what they wanted to do and they put it all together and they had such a fun time doing it so some of the characters that these kids created were a man minecraft noob uh, and then it turned into a homeless guy because <laughs> his costume changed uh, once he took a good look at it. We had Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, um, Ninja Girl, Unicorn Fairy Princess, a Wisconsin Badger, uh, which is a Badger fan, and uh, she had a, an actual box on for pants, and she called it her, her boxers. Um, so we had Thor, a Roman soldier, Harry Potter girl, and a warrior. So they just had a blast. And then at the end, we took a big green screen um, uh, image of them you know, in battle or posing with their costume, and it was super fun. And then we actually had the staff come in and um, let them take a good look at all the costumes. And then the staff was the one that um, actually decided on who got to win Bob the 3D printed avatar model. So, so here are a few pictures of that experience. And again, the kids just, they were so loud and crazy that day, it was really fun. Um, and, you know, a couple times they wanted to pray it out and show some of the <laughs> library patrons what was happening and the staff just loved it. They, I mean, everybody just was in such a good mood that day and it was such a, such a good part of the program. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so day three, we have electronic accessory design. This was one that I kind of tested out during the end of the school year in the spring, um, just to kind of get my feet wet with the, um, Wonderosity kit and it went really well we had three adults and six kids and of course a learning curve for me just trying to figure out circuit tape for the first time and how to get the LED lights to stay lit and then also working with sticky duct tape and all that um, but so when I had it again in the summertime I was able to kind of prepare a little bit better and have things more prepped and to talk kids through it a little bit easier and what I did to make it go smoother, because it was only one adult and 10 kids uh, the second time I did it, um, I thought, okay, I'm going to make sure that everybody stops after step one, um, you know, finding your, your duct tape color. Step two is, you know, putting it back into the, step three would be mapping out your circuit tape. Step four, connect your light or your battery. You know, so it was, it was just taking it a step at a time so that everybody stayed on the same page as one another. Nobody was working ahead or getting left behind, and that seemed to go really well. So in the end, you can see um, on the next slide, I have some pictures of their creation. So it was a ton of fun, and we also used little Velcro latches to put them together. Um, 
So yeah, and of course, and then we just made a little pocket for the battery so they could take it in or out um, and change out the battery um, or to turn it off, on and off. So, and when they also tried to uh, draw out their designs before making it, so. Okay, so day four was train like an avatar. And this is the last of the programs that was four days long. And here's what our avatar gaming uh, course looked like. We had a starting line with this tall U-shaped PVC stand and kind of some streamers hanging down, you know, we call it go. And then they kind of jump and leap from platform to platform from plyboard ramps. And then they ran through a, lad a floor ladder. And then at the end, we had kind of a three-part <laughs> uh, thing happening in the hula hoop that they went to. They had some frisbees where they threw through some hoops and then they had um, some ring tosses on the one side and then they pushed a tire back and forth from the wall back and then ran all the way back to the beginning again. And what I did was um, we wanted to take gaming like an app, you know, what you'd actually use an animated avatar for and we wanted to put it in a real life course. And so the first round, I just had them run the course there and back and I timed everybody just to get an idea of what a decent time would be um, to run the whole course. And then if we can flip to the next slide, you can see. Um, so here's kind of the point system. I just kind of made it up on the fly and it ended up working really well. Um, but I kind of added some points to who was the fastest. And, but then I added the second and third times they ran through, I, I added some obstacles because that's what we usually do when we're playing a video game, right? Usually there's something coming at us and it deducts points or we you know, lose a life or whatever it is. And so what we had were we had some dodgeballs where the kids could throw it at their friends. And then we had pool noodles that, you know, they tried not to get hit by the pool noodles. So um, even the kids that weren't necessarily athletic and enjoying the run to and from, they really did at least like the part where they got to um, try to hit their, <laughs> their friends as they were running by. So and then I added, you know, uh, drop some points if they skipped any of the obstacles or got hit. And then I added bonus points as they got the frisbee and the rings in the right places. So um, it worked out really well. So here's a little bit what that looked like in the pictures. It was a beautiful day out for it, so that was nice. And then at the end, since this was our last day, after the Avatar Academy or after the Train Like an Avatar, we came inside. And I handed out certificates of completion for everybody and got to use the stickers that Demco gave us to represent each of the programs that they had successfully attended and um, had fun doing. And then I also had a little incentive from the beginning of the week to the end and said, hey, if you can come every day this week, you're going to get a free book. You're going to. Um, and I also have a prize at the end, too. So we handed out. Um, I had like little chocolate egg candies with little avatar Lego people hiding inside. It's just kind of something special and fun. And then um, we also had a Wando Reader too, uh, WandoReader.com. And that was a piece of the Avatar Academy online. So in between each day, they could go home and do an online portion that reinforced what they were learning um, with each of those programs. And so, um, you know, I told them if they finished that, they could also get another free book for that, so that was a fun incentive to offer. And then, of course, just thank them for coming all week um, and ask them to come back. And um, and a lot of kids came back the rest of the summer because we kicked it off on the right foot. They love the Avatar Academy, and so most of those kids signed up for all the other programs for the rest of the summer, which was really nice. So my overall feedback here, I have a picture here of my desk and what it looked like that week. Um, your office might be set up a little differently. I'm right smack dab in the middle of everybody. And um, so it took me a while before I could find my chair and work at my computer, but it was so fun and definitely worth it. Um, and day by day, as I was using all those items, you know, I, I eventually uncovered my desk, so it was fine. But um, so anyways, I briefly glanced at um, the materials, the, the curriculum, the program. Um, off and on, you know, weeks leading up to it, but I didn't have a lot of time um, to read the program in its entirety before, too much beforehand. So really it was a week before kicking off this whole week <laughs> is when I really dug into the materials and was reading through, what do I need to get prepped? What do I need on hand? You know, all this other stuff. And so really it didn't take a lot of prep time um, I wish I probably, and it, it worked out fine, 
if I would have done it without a lot of busyness in my schedule, I probably would have started two weeks ahead of time. Um, but I think it would have all turned out the same. But I had a cram schedule with it coming off the school year. I had some assemblies that I was speaking at at the end of the school year at the schools. And so just a lot of other things on my plate leading up to this. So it really was this crammed deal of read the materials, make it happen. So as much as I was intimidated by a learning curve of never using a 3D printer or a circuit tape or any of those kind of fun things, um, I just it's nice to know that anybody can do this, right? <laughs> when that you don't need any prior experience to, to have it be a hit. Um, and so I guess the only other feedback I would say is that, or, and this was just learning ourselves, I did the week-long Avatar Academy, but I also have Thursdays off. So I ended up taking a day in the middle of the week and I skipped it and had them try to come back Friday. And I did lose some attendees that last day. So if I did it all over again, I would do Monday through Thursday and have Friday off. So I just have to switch my own uh, work schedule that way to accommodate it. But other than that, I feel like it was a big hit. I'm very thankful to Demco and the Wonderosity kit and just allowing us to pilot it. And we got really good feedback from the kids and the parents. And so we would love to do it again. Thanks, everybody. Um, so just so um, everybody's aware, if you go to demco.com slash Wonderosity, it'll direct you to the Wonderosity landing page. And on there, there are some free documents that can help you just kind of brainstorm some ways to use Wonderosity kits. Um, the 10 ways to use Wonderosity kits in any learning environment just talks about ways to drop them into existing programs you have or take activities from each of them and bundle them together to make a more robust activity thing. And then the seven ways to use Wonderosity kits for family engagement is exactly what it sounds like. It's ways to use some of the programs from the Wonderosity kits to engage the whole family, which I know is kind of a big thing that we're talking about these days. Um, so we'll get into a little bit of the Q&A. We did have a question right off the bat about um, what kind of the kits include. Um, are they pre-created? So the kits themselves include what you need to do the programs except for the supplies. So the kits have the program guide, which um, each kit comes with four programs in it. Um, and so the program plans are in there. It comes with completion certificates and stickers, bookmarks, posters that you can hang up in the library to market the program. And then also it comes with 25 kit activity books. And those kit activity books are standalone activity books. So they tie to the theme, they sort of loosely tie to the themes of the programs, but they're really meant for kids to take and do on their own or with family members. The other thing you could use those for though, is you could go through them and say, oh, this activity looks really cool, might be kind of fun to do. And run it as another library program. So the idea is that they're really super flexible. Um, the only programs that have some kind of specific supplies that you wouldn't have in maybe your um, in your art supplies generally would be the Avatar Academy electronic accessories. You would need paper circuits materials. So that's LED lights, conductive tape or aluminum foil or wire, and then batteries. And then in the spy school, there is um, spy gadgets and tools, and you need some pocket mirrors and some concave and convex lenses for some of the gadgets. Otherwise, everything that's required to run these programs um, is intentionally either recycled or repurposed materials or things that you should already have in your um, art supplies. Um, another question we had, and this is kind of for everybody, is how are the Wonderosity kits different than other program plans that you have found or used elsewhere? So um, speakers, if you want to unmute yourselves and respond, feel free to do that. This is Kathy. Um, again, I'm still new to the library system, so it's hard for me to say years worth of experience how this compares to others. But just for the year and a half that I've been here on staff and seeing how other staff members choose their programming and all the effort they put into finding um, creative ways to engage kids, this was like a full package deal. And typically we're constantly searching Pinterest and YouTube and other fun things, researching what other libraries are doing. And it was just really fun to already have it presented and everything just in one place. And again, it's something that you can um, use as just kind of a walk-in passive program or something totally hands-on and immersive like my you know that week-long avatar academy you can really do it for a variety of ages and adapt it to whatever you're you're doing so that's what i really enjoyed about it 
Hi, this is Mary from Houston Public Library. Um, the most consistent comment I got from staff who did the program, it was done at about 10 different locations. Uh, and they were in various sizes of libraries across the city. Um, but it was the prompts in the what to do section and how to alter the program for different ages. Uh, because uh, most of our programs are drop-in programs. So you don't really know who you're going to get from day to day. Uh, and so, you know, you may be, you know, expecting a bunch of 12 year olds, but you really get a, a group of eight year olds. And there's a big difference about their style and what they want to do. Um, I would also say some tips uh, on helping them focus more on their own creativity than trying to copy superheroes that are, are already out there. Uh, most kids think of avatars in terms of Hollywood avatars. And so uh, getting them to, to, to try to turn off that brain, that was, that was a challenge for us, uh, that discovery learning part. Uh, but once you can get them past that, uh, using the techniques that they outlined, uh, it really brought forth the creativity. And I always think that that is, is what, you know, that's the most enjoyable aspect is when they get to be creative and, and it's a product that they really made themselves. Hi everyone, this is Claudia. And I, I think kind of scaffolding off of what Cassie and Mary are talking about, you know, for me with, as I said, you know, kind of limited time and, similar you know kids having similar interests similar needs um you know kind of floundering around looking for programs and finding examples that are often either geared towards a school library or a classroom that aren't maybe quite the same as as a un, as the unique environment of the public library you know can be tough there's a lot of okay how's that going to work and while we do, you know, while I do design a lot of programs, it's, it's really nice to have something that's ready to go. And as Mary said, pretty flexible for age groups or the setting. And, and so that's what's pretty unique that the design of these kits is thoughtfully oriented towards the public library experience. So we have another question. Is there anything that you would do differently if you offered these programs again? Yeah, I can, I'll start. Um, this is Cassie. I think if we, I, I'm already thinking about next summer and wanting to do another Avatar Academy basically to kick off the summer, but I don't think I would name it Avatar Academy again because we want to keep the ideas fresh and the names fresh and the programs fresh. So we could probably take what we already did with the, um, with the set curriculum, right? And just tweak it a little bit and reuse it and recycle it. So I'm already dreaming of what I'm going to do again, but that's how I would actually use it differently. Cool. Okay. And then um, what were some of the biggest benefits that you all found to using the Wonderosity kits? This is Claudia. I, you know, I really emphasized the media literacy connection in my program. And I think it was a really natural way to talk to kids ages nine to 12 about media literacy without being really didactic and it having, you know, kind of a presentation format. So it planted the seed. And as I said, kind of gave the conversation tools around that. Um, and we don't necessarily have a lot of media literacy conversations in our schools. Um, and so it was kind of a comfortable, kind of low stress place to have that. And so the kits really allowed us to do that. This is Kathy. Um, like I had mentioned previously is, is I think it really brought the community together, that age group and um, just allowing me to uh, foster those relationships and, and bond with the kids on a deeper level, just having them back time after time. Um, but another thing that I like to focus on too in each of the pieces of the program was what kind of careers they could do um, with that skill set. 
So that was really fun, just diving deep in and sharing some options and some opportunities in their the future. You know? um, I think for us, it was having um, the same concept for our program. We had done a superhero, be, be, be your own superhero the summer before, but the locations that did it, it was that staff designing it themselves and throwing it out there themselves. And so they were fun programs. Uh, I think they were highly enjoyed. However, this gave us that consistency to the program, how it was rolled out, what it looked like. And so that no matter if it was, you know, which side of the city it was on, uh, no matter what the location, there was that consistency there. And that's something that we're really striving for. Awesome, those are great. Thanks guys. Um, there is a kind of a logistics question about how many programs are contained in each kit. Um, so each kit does have four programs. Um, Cassie really elaborated on the four different ones that are in Avatar Academy. And then in Story Makers, um, there are programs around cryptozoology, legends and tall tales, nautical folklore and superstitions, and mythology. And then in Production Studio, there's an Actor Academy, Set and Style Design, a Screenplay Writers Workshop, and Videography. And then in um, Spy School, it's um, How Do You Know, which is a lot about looking for clues in the environment, code making and breaking, spy gadgets and tools, and um, an observation skills one. So, or an uh, art of blending in, sorry, camouflage. And so um, they're really meant to kind of be um, programs that get at like kids interests. We know that kids, 80% um, of kids who can identify what it is they're passionate about are going to say one of the one or more of the following four things and that's reading, learning a technology, physical play, and um, create uh, creation, creativity, creative arts. Um, and so each of the kits has aspects of all four of those that's why we say learn uh, recreate learn and play um, so that we tried to include aspects of each of those different things that so we can get at more kids and where their interests are at and then the other question that we have left um, it's another kind of logistics question about how much space do you need to run a program space is limited in our library setting it kind of depends on you so the programs are flexible enough that you can do them around a conference table like what claudia did with her 3d modeling um, or you can take over an entire maker space like what Cassie did or go outside and use the yard. Um, it kind of depends on how you need to use it in your space. So it's really up to you to determine what the best fit is for the program. Um, they're also great for um, you know, loading the supplies in the book into a tub and taking them offsite to a community center, a classroom, a scout workshop. You know, They're meant to really work in any learning environment. Um, and they don't require a ton of like, like you don't need a sink necessarily or any sort of specific um, kinds of materials. All right, well, thank you everybody for participating. It looks like we got through all the questions. We will be sending a follow-up email to everybody who attended and that will have the link to the um, recorded version of the webinar. And please don't forget to answer the three questions at the end um, when you close out. Thanks again.